<laughs> it's 10 o'clock. Let's, uh, let's uh, engage in worship. We have, uh, this is Congregational Sunday. So it's a great thing about the UCC that uh, in the UCC, we have power with, not power over. And the congregation makes the decisions about uh, the church and the direction of the church. And today is an opportunity for you all, the congregation of the church, to uh, have some say in the leadership of the church and in the budget and whatever else might come before us. So our annual meeting will be directly following the worship service on this same link. You don't need to go anywhere or do anything. And we will have a wonderful worship. I'm really excited. Julie has done a wonderful job with imagery this week. I think you'll, you'll love it. And we'll get going with her singing along with, uh, let's see, I think it was Peggy. A song shall rise. We're on verse three. Come, let us worship and be a church family today. A song must rise for the spirit to descend. Welcome, welcome to UCC Parker Hilltop on a beautiful January morning in Colorado. We exist as a church because we believe the good news of Jesus Christ, that God's unconditional love through the power of the Holy Spirit gives meaning and purpose to our lives. We will, uh, I will stop sharing and we can share together. All right, good job from the kids. Appreciate it very much. We'll continue on in our service with the prelude that was prepared by Ellie and Sue. And it's called Guide Me, O Great Jehovah.
Thank you so much. Karen and Diane are going to provide our gathering the people today. For those of you who don't know, they are sisters. Mm -hmm. So take it away, sisters. We gather to respond to the call of God's love. Thankful that someone cared enough to share this good news with us. May we be compassionate enough to share this divine presence with others. Love when shared is not divided, but multiplied. Love given away is not diminished, but expanded. May our gathering beckon and welcome those near and far to know the love of this divine presence. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Let us pray. We'll start with some silent prayer. And then I will speak the pastoral prayer. And then together we'll say the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us come to God in prayer. From deep within us, we know of a loving presence. All around us, we see glory, beauty, life, and light. We have no words for what we experience, so we cry out, God. In this moment of worship, may that loving presence grow deeper. May our awareness of the divine presence around us grow more intense. May we, gathered in this place, learn to pay more attention to God who loves us at all times and in all places. God of love and life, in this moment of prayer, be more and more in us, that we might live more and more in you. Holy One, what a blessing and privilege we share here in this sacred space and among this loving community but we sometimes are jealous of what we share here. We know that others are longing and thirsting for what we know and experience. Forgive us our reluctance to open our doors, open our hearts to others, some who are like us, some who are not. We repent of our hesitations and unwillingness to witness to those we have considered strangers and even enemies for fear they just might become friends. You direct us to go and do, to spread the good news of your great love for all the creation. We pray our prayers spoken and unspoken today. We hold our families and our friends and our country and the world close to our hearts. We pray that you instill in us stout hearts, strong hands and feet, and gentle, inviting voices. Please unmute and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, holy be your name. Your name. Your your name. Your name. Your name. Your will I will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same day, 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 daily bread. bread. Forgive us our wrongs, wrong. as we forgive we those who wrong. wrong us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom and the power, glory forever. Amen. Karen or Diane? Two gospel writers, John and Mark, two versions of the calling of the disciples. Which one resonates with you the most? Are you the type who wishes to come and see what Jesus is all about before deciding whether to follow him? Or are you the type who says yes to his call without knowing first what it means to commit to the disciples' life? Hear what the Spirit is saying in Mark 1, 
verses 14 through 20. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Passing along the beach of Lake Galilee, passing along the beach of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew net fishing. Fishing was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me. I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask questions. They dropped their nets and followed. A dozen yards or so down the beach, he saw the brothers James and John, Zebedee's son. They were in the boat mending their fish nets. Right off, he made the same offer. Immediately, they left their father, Zebedee, the boat, and the hired hands and followed. Here ends the reading. May God bless these words as we seek to apply them to our lives. Go and do. Well, Friday morning, I was uh, about to feed the puppy, Bailey Beast, the 25 pounder, now 27 pounder, that is tall enough to counter surf. But I didn't know that on Friday until I filled his bowl with puppy chow and turned my back on him for just an instant. <laughs> of course, that's all it took. Crash, all the kibble and the bowl went flying to the floor and it was feast on for both Bailey and Kona, the opportunist, who of course offered to help him clean up the mess for me. Such helpful boys, those two. Well, as I watched them chow down on kibble strewn hither and yon all over the kitchen floor, I thought of this week's scripture passage about what it has to say to our church. I know I'm, I'm weird that way, but hear me out. Uh, puppy kibble and Jesus have more in common than you might think. Last week, we were introduced to John's Garden of Delight, a slow, delicious invitation to a veritable buffet of unhurried time with Jesus, unhurried time under a fig tree. Just getting started in his ministry, we find Jesus in Galilee strolling about in John's gospel when he comes across Philip, and you'll recall, he says, come, follow me. He sees something in Philip to which we are not privy, and Philip sees something in Jesus that compels him to say an unqualified yes. Come and see. Come and be of a disciple's life and ministry. Philip, as you recall, goes to get Nathaniel, who we don't know, a friend, a brother, a cousin, a co-worker, or perhaps a fellow parishioner and says to him, come, see for yourself. And we get a sense through John that time can wait, that Jesus has room in his schedule for the calling to take place naturally, slowly, peacefully. We're in John's gospel garden where life flourishes, color is appreciated, diversity is the norm, and we are in waiting. That's how I think of March 2020 to now, a time in a garden, not of our own making, a garden full of brambles and thorns to be sure. But when we fought our way through and around them, we were greeted also with new life, growth and color, a plethora of new ways to connect, worship, experience imagery and music, 
new ways of being church as the kids demonstrated this morning. Come and see. The invitation was open, extravagant, unconditional, and full of promise that we would not be left alone to figure it out for ourselves. We are never left alone to meet our obstacles, our brambles and thorns, without the protection and balm of the Holy Spirit. For UCC Parker Hilltop, we were wounded, but not mortally wounded. We were scraped up and scratched a bit, lost maybe in the tangle of technology and uncharted wilderness. But with the Spirit's help, we figured it out. We cut a path through the hard stuff to the other side, to the glorious experience of possibility and creativity and connection online. Come and see. Now, the passage that Karen and Diane read to you this week from Mark, Mark's gospel, Mark's message is radically different. Mark's Jesus is more insistent, short on time, and long on purpose. And this is a direct function of the time in which Mark was writing, punctuated as it was with death and destruction, oppression and fear. Mark's Jesus has no time to waste, no time to tarry in the garden. Come and see in Mark is replaced with another command, one not nearly as social. In Mark's gospel, Jesus says to the disciples he chooses, come with me, drop your nets and leave your life as fishermen behind. I will teach you how to fish for men and women and we will start right now. Mark has only 16 short chapters of material and he cuts to the chase, gets right to the point. Immediately after Jesus calls Simon Peter, Andrew, James and John from the banks of the Galilee Sea, they travel to Capernaum and Jesus immediately starts teaching in the synagogue, casts out a man with a challenging spirit that we'll talk about next week, and heals sick people who flock to him as they hear of his wondrous miracles. The come and see of John is replaced with the go and do of Mark. Mark's Jesus says, there's no time to tarry. Follow me and I'll show you to fish for people. I will show you how to get people to pay attention to my message. I'll show you how to bring people back into relationship with God. You will learn how to bring God's love and justice directly out to the people. You will be my hands and my feet, heart and voice in the world when I am no longer in it. Go and do as I do. I see this go and do as the message for our church in 2021. 2020 might have been come and see, come and see what you can do. But now we are exhorted to go and do, go and do. Sometime this year, we will regather in person. Sometime this year, we will make decisions about how to make our message more accessible to more people. Will we continue with live Zoom worship? I believe it is a moral imperative that we do so. And it's not just a question of the haves and the have nots, meaning those who have the ability to physically drive to our church and those who do not. For many, and I listen to your comments, the online experience is more personal, more intimate, and easier to take in. It's safe. There's no need to wear a mask. There's no need, as Dawn was talking about, to worry about your mask slipping. 
or to stand six feet apart or have your temperature taken or answer a questionnaire about where you have been and who you've been with. Online, there's no need to fight with the kids to get up, to shower or dress up. It doesn't seem like such an effort to meet and worship online. So Zoom worship is not anymore just a ministry service we are offering to infirm or physically distanced persons. Maybe it never was. But by this time, it has become the way we worship God on Sundays. We were implored to go and do, to meet with faithfulness and hopefulness, the challenge of the pandemic, and UCCPH answered the call. But we also long to be together, really together, that is more a function of vaccine and herd immunity and the pandemic running its course so that it no longer poses the threat that it does today. Soon many of you will be immunized and you will be able to gather with like vaccinated church friends in small gatherings, in restaurants, in your homes, or across your bridge tables. It will take longer for those of us under 70 to enjoy that freedom. But we will get there in 2021 when the days are longest and warmest. I today am dreaming of an all church picnic outside before the kids start back to school in the fall. There's nothing more that I want to do but to hug each and every one of you and feel your warm embrace given back to me. Go and do. We will kick back up our youth and children's programs, social life, hands-on missions life, and visitation ministries. We will emerge from our wilderness time tested, but energized, uh, a bit wary at first, but driven by our need to be social people of God, a beloved community that fishes for people together, shoulder to shoulder. And that leads me back to the great puppy food caper of this morning. I was content to carefully gather all the kibbles that were scattered about the floor, like John is content to carefully tend to all the petals of all the flowers in Jesus' glorious garden. I was content to move slowly, to laugh at what happened, and to not let a single piece of puppy food go undetected. Come and see. Come and see what this little life form has learned to do that he could not do yesterday. Every day, Bailey discovers something, learns something new, finds a shortcut, gains confidence, and becomes more social in his new home and family. That was us as a church in 2020. But as I was carefully and slowly sweeping the kitchen floor, come and see, dogs were scarfing up the spilled food fast and furious leaving no kibble unfound, no nook or cranny unsearched, eager to get their fair share and then some, with no time to waste, even though the food wasn't going anywhere, as long as they had what they needed to eat, it all up. Go and do. This will be our church sometime later this year. We will hungrily slurp up the kibble that has spilled out before us when at last this pandemic lets us out of our kennels and onto the cool church lawn of unrestrained freedom. In just a few minutes, we will start our annual congregational meeting. Please stay connected for the important work and right you have as 
parishioners for self-governance in a church that happily is faithful, social, financially healthy, and moving ahead into our bright and hopeful future. If you're an active church partner, meaning you have attended worship either live or in the sanctuary before March 15th of 2020, or on Zoom since, or if you catch up by watching the recording and reading the sermons, you're active in the life of the church some way during this time when opportunities for service are admittedly limited and you financially support the work of the church at least to the minimal level of $114 per year or above, then you're eligible to vote. And all confirmed teens are eligible to vote. If you're not an active church partner, you're welcome to stay for the meeting. Come and see how UCC Parker Hilltop is answering the call of Jesus to go and do. I for one am grateful that you have all remained faithful to our church why this past 10 months. We're not quite through our wilderness time just yet. And this is no time to waver or quit doing what has seen us through this time so far. There are a myriad of ways that you can be involved in the life of the church. And there's plenty of need for your voice and heart in upcoming decisions we will need to make in 2021. Our goal is for 100% financial participation by our parishioners in the life of the church. If you have not donated in the past year, I hope you examine with your, within yourself why not? And that you consider answering the question, what is the value of this church ministry as a lifeline for me? We have been in John's garden for 10 solid months, waiting, watching, diving inward, regrouping. We needed to do that. We needed to slow down. Can't you feel it? That you are here is proof that you heeded that message. This week we mourn that more than 400,000 of our fellow countrymen, women, and children were not so fortunate as to make it out of the garden alive. It's also sad. It's also sobering. Yes, we've been tarrying together in John's garden, but now we have been invited into Mark's determined, focused, and directed ministry. We've been told by Jesus to drop our fishing nets and fish for people instead. Will we heed the call to discipleship? Will we scarf up each kibble of God's urgent love so that no morsel is left behind and no person who has found us is left without us? Let us go and do a beloved community of Christ spreading his good news in 2021. May it be so. We are God's beloved. <clears throat> we only have to believe it for ourselves. Gracious God, accept our gifts. Open our eyes. Open our ears and open our mouths. Empower our hands and feet and show us how to take your word out into this broken and hungry world. Amen.
My friends, <clears throat> the time has come. It's 2021. We were invited to come and see in 2020 what we could be in a different form, a different expression. And now in this year, we are told by Mark's Jesus to go and do. And so how will we do that as a church family? Well, for one thing, we'll do it together. It won't just be one or two people that decide how it's going to be. That's why we have a congregational meeting today. That's why we have a church council that's open to anyone who wants to come and see what's going there. That's why we have all these ministry teams. That's why we have an open door policy to your pastor. Because we do it together, whatever we do. We do it as one church. Many voices, one heart. In all things we do, let us do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly and peacefully with the God who loves us as the beloved, unconditionally. Amen. I want to say a big thank you today to uh, Julie and to Peggy and Sue and Ellie and Paul Lungberg for their music and to Diane and uh, Karen for being the liturgist today and to the kids who provided such great artwork for us today. It's 11, uh, 11.03. <clears throat> We're gonna go ahead and start with the congregational meeting. If you need to take a break or drop off, please do, but uh, we need to have a quorum. So please, if you are an active church partner, please stay on this meeting. I'll stop sharing and I'll invite Paul to welcome us to the meeting. 